All right. So in this third example from chapter eight, we're going to see a situation where the only way that we can solve this, and the only way that we can really think to solve this is with um, the conservation of momentum. Because if we're tempted to try to use energy here, we see that if there's two people both motionless, there is no kinetic energy at the start of the problem. And so we realize right away that if we don't have enough information for the work term, somehow where that energy is coming from in the problem, the only um, tools that we can use that give us enough information is the momentum conservation equation. Now, it is important for us to recognize, too, that this situation does not necessarily look like a collision, right? When we hear the word collision, we think of two objects hitting each other. In this situation, there are two objects, two people, that are in contact. No one's hitting anybody, but they push against each other and they both move away. That's a recoil problem. There are other examples that we will see in assignments and assessments. Um, so for example, one of the problems in the textbook is a cannon, which shoots a cannonball in one direction, which means the cannon goes in the opposite direction, that kind of situation. And we want to recognize that that is also a collision problem, a conservation of momentum problem. Okay, so let's get this one started. So we have two people. We have person one, we can see that this purple marker is going to be failing me soon. And we have person two. Oh, yeah, that's way better, a marker. Okay, so for person one, all right, probably the last time you'll see this um, purple marker, but we're going to uh, switch to the blue one for now. Sorry, person. Okay, here we go. For person number one, their mass is 80 kilograms. So mass one is 80 kilograms. They are initially not moving at all. We're stationary on the ice. And then the um, recoil velocity of this person is, once we read through the problem, what we're looking for. We're trying to figure out how far or how fast, rather, how fast to the left, away from um, the pair, they're going to move after they hit each other. For the um, other person, M2, we have a 50 kilogram mass. The initial velocity there is also zero. And when they move away from each other, they'll be moving, the second person will be moving to the right, and so that 50 kilogram person slides away at six meters per second. So the final velocity is positive because it's to the right, six meters per second. Okay, so if we think about this situation, what we have is that M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial is equal to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. And it's worth plugging in all of the numbers so that we recognize mathematically what we ho hopefully already can see from the picture, that there's not going to be any initial momentum. Because 80 times 0 plus 50 times 0 will all equal zero for us. Then we have 80 times our unknown V1 final plus 50 times our positive six. All right, so on the left, this entire thing on the left is gonna be zero, which equals 80 V1 final plus 50 times 6 is 300. So to solve for V1 final, we'll subtract 300 from both sides. So we end up with negative 300 is equal to 80 V1 final. 
So we divide both sides by 80. All right, so we have on the left, we have 3.75, negative, we see here, negative 3.7, oh, that's not a good start to the 7, is it? Negative 3.75 meters per second is V1 final. So let's put a box around that. Okay. So if we look at this situation, we see that we started out with no momentum whatsoever, and yet both objects were able to move. Because they're moving in opposite directions, so we expected that negative sign if we decided that the um, second person here had a positive final velocity. We expected a negative final velocity. Um, they have to move in opposite directions, and if we look, the lower mass person is easier to get moving, and so they go faster, and the higher mass person is harder to get moving, and so they're moving slower at the end of all of this. The other thing that we can think about, and then for this one I'm going to switch to the next slide, that in this situation, all of a sudden we had new kinetic energy show up. I want us to think about something important here. The way that the problem was set up, the 80 kilogram person was pushing on the 50 kilogram person with a certain force. What I need us to keep in mind is that if we think back to Newton's third law, that every um, force has an equal and opposite force acting on the other object, no matter where they're pushing, whether they're um, pushing against each other's hands, let's go back to the previous um, slide for the picture. If they're pushing on each other's hands, this person's muscles are active, but so are these, technically, this person. Even if that one person is pushing on the other's shoulder, the shoulder still exerts a force back the other way. These two people are pushing on each other, no matter who it seems like is actually doing the shoving. So the force is equal and opposite, and that force over the distance which they push, anything that we can try to think of for where that energy is coming from, their muscles are putting energy into the system. So in our problems, it is possible to lose kinetic energy. That's quite common. We can lose kinetic energy to um, lots of different things in a collision. Or in recoil problems like this, we can gain kinetic energy from some external force that we can't really track with our tools, but we can still recognize that we could plug in numbers to get the final kinetic energy here. And maybe I suggest that you try that on your own. One half M2 V2 final squared and one half M1 V1 final squared. That's going to be a whole bunch of energy that wasn't there before. And that came from them pushing on each other. So... When you look back at um, the examples we've seen so far, we already have examples where we've lost kinetic energy and places where we've gained kinetic energy. These are not problems that we can solve with the energy balance equation. We will talk soon about the kind where there is something happening in the problem that requires us to think about energy, but the collision itself will always be this momentum conservation equation. So um, if you haven't yet, make sure to uh, read through the um, slides or watch through the lecture slides. And actually, before you watch any additional um, example videos, kind of look at example A, B, and C right next to each other so that we can right away see the similarity between the process that we use. The picture, the given information, identifying the unknown, writing the momentum conservation equation, plugging numbers in, and solving. Very straightforward process if we are noticing that underlying structure. As always, um, you can rewatch these as much as you need to. You can ask questions by email or discussion boards, and I will see you in the next video.